Okay, yeah, we're recording now. So, all right, guys, welcome to another weekend mentoring. Um, April 10th this time. Um, yeah, so I guess let's just get right into it, just start going over the charts and stuff like that. Um, I did it kind of differently this time where I did put the entire chart in. And it's just because last time, like we were having like a ton of people like uh, posting things like in the, in the chat and stuff like that. Um, oh, Austin's here. So what's up, Austin? What's up, Austin? It's like 7 a.m. his time. Yo, what's up? Anyway, he's he's unmuted. He's good to go. <laughs> Yo. What's up, Rose? Yo. What's up? What's up? What's going on? Sorry, I missed last week. Oh yeah, no, it's all good. Um, yeah, okay. So anyway, I basically uh, just put the full chart in before, just so we know the context, because like, I believe on the next slide, like we only get like a part of it. Yeah, we only get like yeah. this much. So um, again, putting the entire chart in right here. Um, so this one, UPC, um, I guess this member kind of, um, he went and uh, went long a bit right in this area. It's kind of hard to tell if you don't have both, like if we don't have like this context and then mm -hmm. this context mm -hmm. as well. But um, I believe he went long, like right here, kind of just sold, sold, sold. Like, I mean, I like these trades. I think they're good. The ones that I would definitely be hesitant on are these ones. And the reason being is because out of the open recently, we've been seeing a ton of stuff moves where we just pop, squeeze, and then we go way lower and just get destroyed. So I would be careful on a kind of entry like this. Like I, I do understand the thesis where you're like, maybe some people were short early and you might be able to squeeze them out higher. But um, you know, you can definitely tell like after we got this sell off, it was just all longs buying and just chasing at the top, chasing, chasing, chasing into like 11. Um, and like when we don't have that like demand, I think like it's kind of harder for a thesis like this to work, especially with the VWAP bounce. Like if, if everyone is all long and they're all chasing and we don't have any shorts who are trapped and it's just everyone who's long, let's say we got like a farmer pump or something to 1150, you know, when they're all selling and they're all slamming the bid, we're going to get that kind of, I guess like that, that just excess of supply where we just slam lower. So that's why I would be definitely cautious on these kind of like bounces, you know, like I think just probably like long trap at the open and then we just ended up moving lower. So I would be definitely cautious on these ones, especially after we get a candle from like 12 to 1050. Like that's a pretty emotional candle in my opinion, you know, I don't know if anyone wants to add anything more. No, I mean, you know, uh, based on this chart, I think the market is, uh, opens at 8.30, right? Like his time. Yeah. I can so, move. Yeah. So, seven, yeah. so 7 a.m. is technically 8 a.m. I mean, you know, I mean, that view out reclaim is good. Also, I mean, the, at the open trade, I think the first bounce, yeah. you know, I, I, I would say it's okay, but I just don't like the other two ads right after the stuff, right? I mean, you know, start went to 12. Uh, you know, he got his first bounce. Why the heck you still want to kind of, you know, get back into that, uh, you know, the same spot, yeah. you know, after when you saw huge stuff like that, you know, from 12 to 10 to 50. And, you know, it just, but, uh, you know, I, I, I like, you know, that trade uh, long, at, you know, right, right the first bounce at open. It's, it's tricky sometimes, right? When, you know, you can have a rock pool, you know, big one and you end up losing. But, uh, you know, if you anticipate and try to trade, you know, first five minutes or like, you know, five minutes at open like that, you know, expect, the, you know, the, the range also. Yeah, yeah. but uh, so th this this one is good. Uh, just, uh, you know, after, after the open, yeah. On that yeah. stuff channel. That's like, all. I think for the first bounce, like, 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 I guess, like, I don't know, like, I think for me, like, I don't, 
I, you want a quick wash so you can get filled and then that emotional kind of pop back up. But like in this type of scenario, it's like you almost got a death candle. And after you kind of get that death candle, you're going to scare out a lot of buyers and a lot of people who are already chasing at the top are going to be fearful. And that's why I probably would have avoided it. I remember I did and was like, wow, this thing really tanked. Um, that was what I was kind of thinking and why I didn't want the VWAP bounce. Um, that's just what was going through my head. I, I, I'm going to repeat myself. I, I always say, uh, say this every weekend. Is <laughs> if you wait the first 10, 15 minutes in order to see where the stock is going. And, and, and I'm saying this more to me than this happened to me on Friday with FUBO. I, I had FOMO. And instead of doing what I say that I, I always wait the first 15 minutes, I got, I got stopped out twice on FUBO. And after I got stopped out twice, it ripped from 21 to 25. Stupid. Like if I only would have waited until I, at 9.45 exactly, the buyers came in and just ripped the stop. But I was already hurt because I already stopped out twice and I was mentally compromised. And that's why I always say, if you, if you are not bow and addicts or you're not used to this type of volatility, the, the thing that rips from 10 to 11.50, look, $1.50 on a dollar stock on 10 minutes, it's a lot of, it, it's a lot, you know? It, what if you would have get caught in at 11, long in at 11.50 or at 11, you know? You would have get stopped out a lot of times. That's my, my way of seeing it, Austin. Uh, I don't think I can add off what everyone has said already. All right. Yeah, 100%. I agree with you, Cloud. Yeah. No, I, I do think that if you are a newer trader, like, unless it's like a low hanging fruit setup, like, it, it is good to watch and it is good to observe. Like, you know, like, even if you just like came to MIC, you're brand new, like, maybe the best thing to do was just observe for a couple of months and just watch how things move instead of being so emotional with money. Like, I think that's one thing that I wish I had have done is like, because like once you start trading, like, and you just jump right in and you don't really know a lot, like, I mean, the odds of success really aren't there. Like you, I think it's important to like educate yourself, learn how to, trade and then kind of observe for a little bit what you would do and then put slowly put some money in and slowly start funding an account instead of saying to yourself you know what i'm gonna go out i'm gonna fund a, a 30k account i'm like this is easy like that's probably a recipe for kind of like blowing up in my opinion um yeah i, I i'm okay like i think that like you know if you're newer like it's good to observe i, I really like that you know um this is the acy chart Again, just adding the chart for context so we know what it looks like and so people aren't like spamming it in the chat like 20 times. Um, and this is kind of the, the trade that this member took. A um, Couple things on this one. I like the entry into uh, like 550. Like it wasn't a premature entry. I think like, you know, you, 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 wait, you waited long enough, saw some type of strength, just like kind of like purely a kind of like momentum based scalp. Um, I think it, it would be hard for me to want to long this at $5 because, you know, at $5, like the stock doesn't really look like we're, we're doing anything. And like, I mean, like if you took this trade, let's say off a of $5 support or even at 525, like it wouldn't, wouldn't be something that I would necessarily want to um, like long into, but I like that add into strength. I think that's okay because your thesis has to be like, okay, everyone who shorted after this halt is now underwater if they're still holding. Um, and so we kind of get that move higher. The things that I don't like about this trade or are, it looks like it was pretty emotional and that this member didn't really have a plan. Um, you know, that's the problem is that you, you got a great entry, you wait it. I mean, this like, like if we look at this chart, like this move is a bit premature, like probably not gonna squeeze off this move. We come down, we start retesting again. We've waited enough time for the move to actually work and actually kind of make sense. So we, you know, entry over 550 is good. But like, again, like you need to have some type of plan, right? I mean, this just looks like purely emotional, saw it dumping after the halt and just got right out, right? If you had a stop for maybe like, let's say break even, 
Or even if you said, okay, my target is $6 or my target is $6.50, you would have gotten filled and you would have gotten out at the you know, correct type of price. Um, I think if you had a stop for break even, you'd know that you're saying, okay, I'm not going to give anything back. And that might you know, allow you to be a bit more comfortable in this type of situation. But again, if you had just preset and said, okay, my plan is to get out at 650 or my plan is to get out at a resistance level at 645. Um, you know, so we have the good plan for the entry. Now it's time to start planning for the exit. So really good entry. But, um, and a lot of times when people are longing, like I, I tell them like, you know, preset yourselves because in longing, like nothing's guaranteed, right? We can squeeze to 11 bucks, but that can be taken away real quick. So if, if your issue is greed and, and your issue is not being able to sell and your issue is that you have really great entries and really bad exits, you might as well just go ahead and preset all your exits to, so you can start growing and start getting better instead of just kind of saying to yourself, okay, you know, I'm going to do it kind of discretionary without an exit plan every single time. Because when you're just planning your entry and you're not planning your exit, like you're, you don't really have a trading plan. You know, you have half a trading plan. You know, it's like, so I think that if you need to have a plan on where you're going to exit, and even if your plan is I'm getting out at six bucks, stick to that. Like the worst that can happen is that it rip, rips higher, but at least you're in the green and you're not in this situation, right? Because this trade is the exact same as you just getting out into strength at six bucks, six, anticipating a six stop, right? Um, that's kind of my thoughts on it. <clears throat> Yeah, I, I, I like what Harry said. It's it's basically that, and and like I, I see that he um that he wrote that like six seventy was the the target, and then maybe ten. Here's the thing though, um, th this is like kind of what I talked about middle patience before. It's like you're like you're willing to hold on to it as long as nothing bad happens, and that means that you don't. That means that you yeah. don't know when you're gonna kind of you know. It, it's part of like I don't know exactly where I'm gonna stop out. It means I'm gonna stop out if I see something really something that I that that just makes me like oh my god oh shit and that means that like you're not that that means like Harry said like if you don't if you don't know that about yourself if you don't if if you or if you do know something about yourself like yeah. you know that if you see this crash that, that you're going to freak out and sell you have to know that about yourself so that you can sell before that happens yeah 100 <laughs> percent. yeah you gotta know that um and, and one, one more thing I will say, it, it, I think this halted. It looks like it halted. Yeah, so yeah. if this halts, <laughs> be prepared for the biggest, scariest wash ever. And before the stock opens, make a decision. Am I going to hold through whatever it is until it gets to X price? Or am I, or am I just going to sell it right at the open? Don't be like, well, I'm going to hold it for a push. But if it tanks, I'm going to sell. <laughs> it will tank it will tank so before the yeah. stock on halt make a decision ahead of time be like i'm gonna let it tank all the way to blank and yeah. I, you know break even whatever it is and yeah. then i'm selling so you don't sell in panic yeah. that's why i said like just set a stop for break even if you're in this situation because hell this could dump all the way down to 525 like at least you're getting out break even um, but I do love the entry here. Like the entry is really good. Now it's time to focus on that kind of exit. Tom, I don't know if you want to say anything or, or plow or, you know. I just oh, no. think, uh, you know, the entry is really good. Yeah. But like you said, you know, this plan is not complete, right? Yeah. Because of that emotion. If, you know, he kind of said it, you know, from the start, because, you know, he entered basically a 550, right? So his original risk was, I don't know, like 520 or 530, right? But then stock continue to go higher, you know, so you have to kind of pick it, okay? So you, so you have to have to choose, okay? Get out maybe one fourth or whatever, small amount, just to pay yourself a little bit before getting into that hole, right? And then set the rest of break even or whatever. But, you know, it's really all comes down to planning and uh, you know, entry is good, but it just, you just have to work, you know, with your exit as well. And it is really important too. Yeah. I'm good. You're good. Everyone's already good. said. All right. Um, this is the chart on this one for kind of context. Um, we can go back to it. 
Um, and yeah, so I think with everyone, I've really tried to like with every chart, like I've like, I've not just picked it because it's a, uh, you know, just a random chart or an order. Like I've tried to incorporate like a lesson in each of them. Cause th there are some charts where it's just the, someone has nailed it perfectly. And it's like, there's not really a lesson, but I think with this one there, there's a lesson as well, because I really do like that kind of just VWAP reject. Um, you know, I'm a fan of this one. I like how he said, okay, it's a broken chart. Um, you know, he knows what to expect. Um, I mean, the odds of us really reclaiming, I mean, 10 or 12, pretty unlikely. I mean, anything can happen, but pretty unlikely odds, especially under VWAP. And I really just like how it's kind of like just the first resistance kind of test there. Um, the only thing I would say is that it kind of looks like you waited for the reject, which is okay, that's fine, but you would have gotten a better fill had of you preset, let's say, you, you know, you would have gotten an extra 10, 20 cents if you just had a preset that first kind of view up. Um, and we also know it's kind of that first pop where anyone who's bought after the open can get out for at least break even. And um, I, that's kind of an emotional thing as well where so we have kind of that combined with VWAP, which is a way better resistance than a support line. Let me tell you that. And, you know, we have that kind of first pop, first test. That's why I kind of like it. He said he took it because it rejected VWAP. Um, I think, it, uh, uh, again, like that's okay, but maybe in the future, you might want to just preset, have a defined risk. It'll make your trade less emotional and it'll probably allow you to hold for a bit of a fade. But as we can see here, we kind of dump and then we test again and then we end up going lower. So, I mean, like when we're down here, it's like at the very bottom of the range, like you have to take it off. Like you have no choice. Like you can't be the guy who's holding for uh, seven and then six and then five, right? You, you got to take it off. Like we're at the very bottom of the range. It's like, we're in a situation where it's like, how lower can this really go? Like we've gone so low in such a so little time that we're, we're expecting that kind of, bounce higher but you know again i think that this trade you know definitely the lesson in it is just you know trust that kind of first resistance um and yeah he said the setup is vwap reclaim but i think that is a mistake because this is not a vwap reclaim bro anyway austin i don't know if you want to add anything uh no uh, one, one thing of note is it's a very thin stock. So if, if you didn't want to put it in order ahead of time, I can understand the fear because okay, it, yeah. I, this one is like, I'm sure this one had a spread of like seven cents or something. Oh my gosh. So, but again, that, uh, you know, it, it, it's double-edged sword because the, on thin stocks, you want a good price too. So I don't know. It's, it's a very, um, oh, yeah, it's a very, it's a very difficult tricky because like, you know, these ha you know, these can reclaim really hard, but so it's just, it's a little bit of balance. Like you can get probably a little bit more size if you preset the order. Um, and if you don't preset the order and go after you do, I would say that you do have to, min you know, mitigate your size a little bit. Um, it's a trade off. Yeah, agreed. Tommy? Yeah, just one thing to add on this one, like an Austin says, this one is a low floor. I think uh, the float was like 2 million or something, or maybe uh, under three. And on this type of play, if you don't have a plan, okay, beforehand, don't trade it because you have to give the stock enough range to kind of, you know, to work. You cannot simply just wing it, just wait for the stock to pop and then I'm going to get it. No. On this type of play, you have to, I don't know, like bow it, you know, have like focus on one good entry, maybe 950, 10, 1050 even, yeah. you know, because it, it needs that much of room to kind of, you know, uh, to work, right? Not like something, you know, with the large flow when the range or like, you know, they're moving by one or two cents, that's easier to get in and get out. But on this type of play, if you don't have a plan, don't trade it. And I mean, this trade is really good. It's just, uh, I'm not sure if he got in, in, you know, before or after rejections because that one minute, I think, yeah. Uh, so, you know, either way, I mean, that's, that's pretty good. But he got in like 947 
the stock popped all the way to 990 almost. So it's like 50 cents, right, against him. And he ended up covering like for 40 cents. So the risk and reward here is not like something I really like because you okay for the stock to pop for 40 or 50 cents against your position. You're fine with that, but then instead you're covering for 40 cents. It just really doesn't make sense to me. Yeah, but uh, you know, overall the entry is good. The exit, it, it's okay as well. So, Cloud, anything? Uh, uh, what you cannot see of the chart is that it, it reclaimed twice, um, one time again after that. Like the the continuation yeah. of the chart is that it did it again. I'm not gonna add anything because I think you cover up everything. I will not short a two million dollar, uh, two million short, uh, two million flow. Uh, I'm I will not do it. I'm I'm too much of a cheat person in terms in terms of of scare i don't know i'm not going to talk about it you can you can continue okay um this one um j trigger again i just thought that we could highlight some really good short plays because i really do like this one a lot um in my opinion uh this stock was a bit of a thicker one i think i remember like it was a bit of a thicker stock um you know bit of a thicker float i think and we end up kind of just I, I guess like moving higher um you know that's good um and then uh we open up push to 240 um oh anyone who's short like after 240 like in my opinion like anyone who was short underneath 230 or was trying to get in probably covered into 40 250 area so once we kind of get that, in my opinion, it's going to take a while for the stock to reset, rebuild. And if it does want to move higher, it's going to take a while. Um, honestly, like could be half hour to really like an hour. Um, and then, so anyway, we got this kind of uh, candle. Let me just like move my, oh, we can't really see the volume on here, I guess. Anyway, we got this major big kind of like stuff candle after uh, mm -hmm. like we tested kind of like um, 250 move lower. A lot of people were really going long, I think, for that kind of high a day break, hoping for it to really, really push higher. And I think a lot of them got anyway, like just kind of like trapped. We had a ton of people slamming the, the bid. And then here we had it like kind of like consolidating, trying to go higher. Um, then we got this stuff lower and we, we move lower. So I do like this trade for a couple reasons. Number one, it's kind of like what we preach where we we just kind of like short that kind of uh like you know short that pop after we get that kind of topping candle after we kind of get that exhaustion after we get that kind of move lower maybe some buyers trapped anyone who bought over 230 is now trapped so we have that kind of also in the back of our minds for kind of like the thesis um and yeah you know i like this one um I do think like, just, you do have to be like, you, you have to know that your risk in this type of trade is like, you know, if you're shorting, let's say at like 31 here, you have to do know that your risk is like 40 to, to 50, because if we do reclaim 50, we could go probably like, if we reclaim 40, we could definitely go to 50 or 60, I think. Um, but in this type of scenario, I just think too many, too many people who went long were just trapped. So it wasn't going to work. Or if it was going to work, it would, Definitely have to take like an hour for the long setup. Um, I don't know, Austin, if you want to add anything. I know you did talk about like adding on the on the weakness for sure. Yeah, I, this is this is a great opportunity for an ad. Like, I mean, um, right? You know, when you get short on there on that on that lower high, it, I mean, it's a it's a routine base hit kind of pop short, blah blah blah. But then you can you can see that it clearly stuffed. Like, if I'm a short and I'm and, I, and I'm short that stock and I see that. Uh, that immediately lowers my risk to 240. If I was thinking about risking 250, like, or thinking about like, let's see, you know, because if I short into two, anywhere in between 230 and 240, I'm probably not stopping out at 241 on the dot. I'm, I'm just not going to do that because like, I know like it's going to get up there 241, two and stuff. I'm probably risking like 245 to 50 on this kind of short. But like the second we get that kind of stuff there on 240, immediately i know we should not be getting over 240 so now i can concrete a risk at 240 i'd be slamming that shit under 230 
I'd be sl- like the second that shit stopped, I'd be slamming that. And now, now I'm risking 240. And yeah. now I have an opportunity to be in big size, you know, like, or, you know, and even if I normally short like a thousand shares, then I'll go 2000 because now I don't have to risk 250. Now I can risk 240. And I have an opportunity now to get a decent size win. And I think that's a lot of traders problems. Short traders is they have short traders problems as small wins and big losses. Well, this is an opportunity when you see that stuff to, to really lay it on there and, you know, go in 2000 and risk, you know, and instead of risking like 150, you could risk still about 150, maybe 200, 200, even add $50 of risk more because it's stuffed and be, but be in a full size trade. And now you can make like 400, you know, 400, 500 even. Yeah, uh, on this one, I traded, uh, you know, uh, same like Jed did here as well. I mean, you know, this trade is really good, perfect execution. Uh, you were patient enough, right, uh, you know, to get the uh, the first short, get squeezed, and then, you know, uh, all people are chasing long. They got, you know, stuff as well. I mean... This is one of the setup that I really like, you know, squeeze out all the early shorts, trap all the, you know, uh, FOMO longs, and then the stuff like that, it went, you know, below view out and bounced back. And I got in pretty much the same place as Jed did, 230 something, and I got another one at 237. On this type of play, I don't mind having my, like, you know, not full size, but really good amount of size. And I would be willing to, you know, race all the way to that, you know, new height of day because I know if the stock is going to squeeze, right? It needs to break that height of day because if not, it's going to continue to go lower. But what Austin says here, and yeah, yes, you can, you should have added more on that view app, you know, like all like that rejections again. Uh, I think a good place would be is, you know, you have probably you have to slam right when it starts when, you know, below view app, I think like 227 or something, just to get more size in. But uh, on this case, uh, you know, I got like 237, pretty much like top take with good size. So I, I didn't mind like, you know, uh, like I, I really didn't have to kind of add more size there, but I, I really love this trade because you were patient enough, right? For that move and, you know, for that trade, just size up a little bit because, you know, if you were taking the first trade right at the open, you would have scaled maybe, I don't know, 30% of your size. But instead of that, you waited, you know, long enough, just added a little bit more size once you've seen the confirmation, that's all. But uh, overall, it's a really good trade. The only thing I'm going to add is people have asked, like four people, five people have asked where to add. Uh, between 10 and 10.30, you know, that is the zombie rule, right? The moment that in between that, it tries to go to BWAP and it doesn't get to BWAP, it doesn't have the push nor the volume in order to get to BWAP, I think there's where you either start another position and if you're still in, you add because then you have a BWAP rejection and then it looks like it's going to continue going down and your stop loss is right about BWAP and the BWAP will continue going down as volume as, as they continue shorting. So I think that answers the question that people had in the. Okay. Um, this is FT, FT. Again, this is just a chart for context. Um, FT, FT um, was one that ran, I believe was it the Thursday before Thursday. the holiday? Yeah, Thursday. Before the holiday, that's what I thought. And this name in the morning um, was was pretty choppy. Um, you know, it, uh, it, it just was like, I think for me, um, you know, it was not really a trade in the morning. And then after this, I didn't really like it. It ended up trapping and going higher. But for me, it was really kind of like a no trade. And then we got the offering way lower. Um, this one's by five, nine, um, you know, again, I, I love this ad over VWAP. I also love this cover too. I mean, if this was me, like, I don't know if I would be covering like full size here because we have just seen this massive, massive 
rejection, right? That's why long, going long, like I didn't really love it because like you couldn't get filled into the strength. Like it, it was just impossible. Like it was just a, like a telly. So, I mean, in that type of situation, can't really touch. Um, and so, you know, I love this. I love this. You know, I think this is a really good stop. Like this is a great stop. And then he ended up kind of just shorting after we tanked a couple scalps and then he went short and then kind of got this offering. Um, you know, I think for me, like, uh, just good trades all around. I really do like the stop like this, the best trade here, I think, in my opinion, is the stop out, right? Because this is kind of a high odd situation, especially this week, we've seen a ton of these reject and just go lower. Um, so really good stops here. I mean, good trades here. Um, you know, and he ended up catching the offering, which is really nice as well. Um, but yeah, I think all in all, like I do, I do like these ones. I don't know if anyone wants to add anything. The only trade I don't like is the one at 10, 10, 10, 10, 20. That red, I don't know. I don't understand what was the rationale behind doing that trade there, knowing that it's near um, zombie time, that is when the stock starts going up. So that, that's the, my only comment. All the other, it's beautiful. All the other trades are good. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I kind of like it as well. Like you said, Harry. Uh... Uh, he basically used VWAP as his guy, right? I mean, that's pretty good, pretty solid in the first, I don't know, like 30 minutes, uh, short near VWAP, uh, and then cover on the wash, stop out when VWAP reclaim, short again when, you know, stop to that VWAP. I mean, all oh, it's good. And agree with Claw here uh, regarding that 1030 rule. I mean, you know, no way in hell that you know that stop is going to do offering like that right it's impossible yeah. like the best case that you can get okay so 770 and if i was trading this one and which i did i, I think i shorted somewhere uh 716 7, uh, uh, 70 as well but i was basically just channel kind of you know trading it right 770 and 740 and that's it i would have you know have my orders there to cover that and and you know zombie time yeah i mean you know if it has a if, if he had a like a, you know tie race and you know that's that's cool right i mean if you short 770 eight something you're risking 790 i mean that's that, that's cool as well uh, so yeah i'm uh, pretty I, I i i like this chart uh, the first like uh 15 or like 20 minutes after that you know good job bro i mean kill it <laughs> yep make that made a lot of money Austin. No, I mean, I mean, you guys said it all. It's a great chart. I mean, it's just, I mean, it's just very, it, it's the, the good thing about this chart is that like a five-year-old can see what you're trying to do. You know, it's like, Hey, you know, when it, when it tanks and it looks like it's, it's broken, I'm going to start shorting, but it, it starts to reclaim and I cover, but then it fails again and time to get back with my thesis. Yeah, and sure it falls out. That's the, I, I mean, that's, that's yeah, the idea that we want to do. Yeah. yeah. I literally love that explanation. Like that was, that was good. Um, okay. Uh, this is a CEMI just chart here for context. Um, in the morning, got this kind of like run in the morning, um, kind of go lower reclaim just, that was a trade. Um, yeah. So this member, he took that kind of same type of trade that we were kind of talking about earlier, where let it tank short the pop in towards VWAP noticing that it you know wasn't pushing nail and bail um i do like it um you know i guess like maybe maybe in hindsight could have held maybe a, a, a bit longer or tried to get a bit more out of it but you know i i like the nail and bail idea here i think it's good um you know you've just witnessed a rejection you say i'm not going to shorten the weakness gonna wait for a pop you know like that idea i think it's good um you know he saw that it was starting to reject um 580 he saw the slam waited for the pop so he could risk off of view app because if you if you get in a position where you're shorting down here it's like okay well where's my risk going to be right you know if you short five three you know you're risking five five so i mean that's not really ideal right so i think what you want to do wait for that pop especially in this type of situation wait for that pop and then just short lower um you know tommy or anyone 
I think this trade is really good. Uh, I like uh, the fact that he waited for that stuff on a view app, you know, shorting back to bounce that view app. I mean, that's 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 pretty good to me. Waited for the confirmation and, you know, just short the bounce, right? Risking whatever the view app was, so like over a little bit. Yeah, overall, it's, it's really good trade. Yep. I don't have anything to add. It's good trade below BWAP. Everything you short below BWAP, it's good. Okay. Austin. I know. No, I mean, it's a routine base hit. You could do yep. these every day. All right. RMO. This is the chart for contacts. Um, get this wash, get this pop back. Um, you know, interesting one. Definitely an interesting draft. Um, so this member went short and ended up covering, um, you know, I think tough one, but this is all I'm going to say. And this is all I'm going to kind of add on this one. Cause I think that there is a great lesson here when you want to be shorting. It's like, okay, like when do, when do I want to be shorting? I think the best times to start shorting are the first time it tests that level. If you say, we're going in towards 550. That's a major resistance. You want to test, you know, you want to go short into 550 the first time, right? In this type of situation, you have to say, okay, well, what line am I really going off of? And how many times has this level gotten tested? Because the more times we test the level, the more times it's going to get broken, right? If we test 550 eight times, you know, we're going to, we're going to break. If we test 850, you know, three times, we're probably going to break on that third time, right? or even the second time. So you need to be aware of that and you need to almost give the stock a little bit more room because if we break that level, what's the next line higher, right? So, you know, I don't really see, also, I don't really see a line on this chart like that you really wanna be shorting into. Like, I mean, maybe 1190 is okay, right? Maybe 1220 is okay, right? I mean, it's still kind of far, but if you wanna scale kind of smaller size, but in this scenario, like you want to be shorting the first time we test VWAP. And the first time we test VWAP is 1150, right? If you want to take 1150, cover, cover lower, like that's good, right? That's on you because that's the first time that we've tested this kind of resistance level. But again, we test 1150 again and we do reject, right? Second time. I mean, the third time 1150 gets broken, like we're going to, the stock wants to move higher. Like it's going to move higher. Like you can almost count that unless we can't break above 60 and stuff, this thing is going to move higher. Like we've tested three times this area now, like the stock wants to go higher. So I don't really see the thesis for shorting. Also, you need to remember that everyone who went short is short under 1150. And once they start covering, um, we're gonna get those short covers, those long chasers, we're gonna start moving higher. So in my opinion, don't really see the thesis for the trade here. And also you drew your support line at 1110. You drew your resistance line at 1160. You drew your line at 1190. Why aren't you shorting into 1190? Why are you shorting 1170, right? You drew another line up here at 1220. How come you didn't go short into that one and stop out, right? So you need to think to yourself, like, are you taking this trade because like you're emotional or, you know, cause I mean, we've reclaimed like half of this death candle already. Like we almost reclaimed that entire death candle in the first, like candles. So you need to just really say to yourself, okay, um, you know, I, I just don't see the thesis for it, in my opinion. Anyone else? Yeah, this one's scary, dude. Well, um, <clears throat> uh, this one's pretty dicey. And it is a low hanging fruit trade. And I understand the low hanging fruit trade into the, the yesterday day level. And this, um, this person said that they were planning on uh, shorting it from 1250 you know, to the red green area, which, you know, would have been like 1290, you know, I don't see any like scales in there. And if you're planning on scaling to 1190, that red green, I believe the 1190 was the red green. Yeah. Oh shit. I didn't realize that this was low hanging fruit. Oh no. Yeah. Sorry. 1290. No, yeah. it's 12, red to green is like, red to green is like 1290. That is an yeah. unbelievable range to, yeah. you know, like, if from yeah. 1250 to red green that's okay but then he sees that it he sees it tank and then he decides to short lower there bro what i don't understand why the cover is so 
freaking high up here. Yeah, I, that's I really, what I'm saying too. I, I really know. don't. You can't. The, the whole idea of red to green at 1290 is so far gone out the window once yeah. you decide to short at 1170. Uh, that's over. I mean, an 1170 trade is over at 12 uh, at that point. Yeah. So, yeah. I, like, yeah, that's, you got two, you got two ideas and, but the main idea is I want to win on the stock. So you got two ideas trying to jam it into one kind of trade and you have this, conf, you have this conflicting, oh, but it's, it's still a low hanging fruit. It's still below 1290. I shouldn't cover. I shouldn't cover. I shouldn't cover. Oh my God, it's too big. I have to cover. Yeah. And that's, that's what happened there. So you really have to make up your mind is it, is it going to pop to 1290? If so, don't be in. Is it not going to pop to 1290? Yeah. All right, 1150 to 1190 kind of range. Yeah. You got to make up your mind. Yeah, I also think on this type of trade, like you have to remember, like what's the ultimate risk, right? Like if you're shorting a day one, like your ultimate risk is going to be high a day. In this type of scenario, your ultimate risk is 12. Previous day, previous day close. Right, that's your ultimate risk. Yep. So when you're, when you're shorting like that far away, from the previous day close, then um, like I didn't realize that this was low hanger. So that kind of like change, changes my perspective a little bit, but you got to remember your, your risk has now been moved to a dollar, right? A dollar away is what you're risking. So you need to say, okay, am I risking a dollar to make a dollar or, you know, am, right? So you need to be shorting near the top of that range which uh, that's how I see it. The, the thing about it is that if he would have thrown a line between 1240 and 1250 and play only the outer lines and waited a little bit, the 15 minutes, because immediately when you have that big green candle, he should have gone out. So that second green candle is too much. But it, this is a, a, a green to red move, you know? It's like it opened at high of day. Usually what I've seen from experience, this happens a lot in big caps. They're going to try to reclaim from going green to red, and they fail, usually when they're sold down. This is a $11, $12 stock. I don't know where the news are behind it. But $12.80, if, if he would have wait for, waited for the and had an order at $12.80, he would have made a lot of money, you know, because then after that, it just crapped the whole day, you know, just for not waiting 15 minutes. But now that we can see it, we can, we can analyze it, but we never knew. But yep, I agree with everything that you guys said. All right, solid yeah. one. Um, this is chart for context. SOS, this one was that kind of like Wall Street bets play. It was a bit slower in the morning. Um, and basically what he, oh, this is another low hanger. I'm getting confused on the low hangers with the TZ charts because I'm writing these charts for context because I think it's SOS, but then I get confused that it's a low hanger. Okay, okay, this is the next day then. <laughs> Crap, okay, this is the next day then. I get confused with the low hangers. Um, yeah, I think that this one, you know, pretty good. I like the ad. That's what I like. Like, you're like, okay, I'm not going to go. Um, what you could have done, it is maybe covered at like 520, but I mean, this is hindsight. I'd probably still hold it. Um, you know, I do like the ad because that shows that you do have some kind of conviction in this trade. I like the cover here. The only thing is, is that this seems like more of an emotional cover. Like if you had have added here, you would have definitely still been in the trade all the way down, 100%. Um, but ended up kind of, I guess, two covers, like two, two, two entries, two exits, but you, you definitely could have covered here. Like this is one of those kind of like, again, bottom of the range trades where we just, where we just go to the bottom of the range. Um, and when we just start puking and when we're just like, you, you, you can't think it can go any lower and we're really far from view at, that's where you want to start kind of covering. Like, you know that you'll look at your PL and be like, wow, I'm up a lot. And then you start to feel that greed kind of come in. That's a good time to take it off. Um, but I do like this. Like I, I like the, the, okay, I'm going to add a view up. I'm going to add a bit more into maybe an outer line and I'm going to cover right away. Um, but again, this is another wider range one. And the previous close is 570. So we do have, you do need to be willing to stop out in this type of situation. 
um, if we do somehow reclaim and if we do somehow go higher, you need to be like, like your ultimate risk here really has to be like, I think like, you know, definitely 550, right? Definitely, we get over 550, you know, there's, there's a lot of people that could definitely potentially be trapped, right? So I think it's good. Um, and that's kind of how I feel about it. I don't know if anyone wants to add anything. He made a plan, he did it. As long as he had a stop low over 551, I'm good. Looks oh yeah, this perfect. one's a girl, it's Selena. I don't know, I'm, I'm, I'm sorry, Selena. Yeah, for me it's good. Plan, I love girls how they trade because of the discipline. Yeah, I love this one as well. Uh, you know, low hanging fruit. I think this one I had a plan uh, on my watch list as well. The other one that I just saw RMO. I mean, I think that person didn't watch my video at all uh, because I kind of <laughs> explained it in my low hanging fruit video, guys. I mean, for the low hanging fruit, in the first thirty minutes, if stock couldn't pop, don't bother. Okay. After that, after ten a.m., whatever, if stock pops. It's no good. Usually it's going to end up like squeezing more people and it's reclaimed like red to green. It probably is going to go higher. But uh, uh, Selena on this one. Yeah, I mean, pretty good. 540. Yeah. Uh, I, I, I like the ad there instead of, uh, you know, I think you started, started like 520 and then try to add more for 540. I mean, that's pretty good. Colon or what? Uh, should cover more something at five, but uh, it's all good. I think. All right, Austin. Anything or no? Oh, all right. Very very simple. This one's FTFT. Um, this one it was a low hanger. Maybe I think I got right. Um, yeah, I I like this trade. This is another Selena trade. She submits a lot of charts, so I mean, you got to give it to her, right? I mean. Got it. I had to do two for Selena because, you know, she submitted a lot. So, I mean, you know, got to give it to her. But I, I love the patience in this. Like this, this trade, this is, a, this is a very, very difficult trade to achieve an entry like this. Like this is a really, really good entry. Like if we're looking at this, I mean, she waited so long for this entry. Unreal. Great patience. Love the entry. Um, you know, again, maybe you kind of get chopped out on this kind of like view app hovering kind of area. But you know, I, even though it did go way lower, I, I love the nail and bail mentality. I love how you just kind of said, okay, I'm going to, you know, even though you only made 10 cents, um, you know, I, I do love the, I love the patience for the entry. Like, this is the one that I, that I, that I like, like, you know, fantasies for the win, you know, um, anyone else? Yeah. Love it. Yep. Pretty much. I, I you know, as you can see, first 30 minutes, right? Stock should pop at first 30 minutes for the low hanging fruit. It doesn't, <laughs> don't bother. <laughs> you, you, you know, I want to add, um, I want you guys, for the other 146 people that are here, I want you to see how she makes her plan because we have seen previews that there's no plan. Look how Selena says, my lines are, 620, 650, 670, my risk 680. I'm pretty sure that 680 is a hard stop. It's not a mental stop. She has the order there. And then she posts, she puts his targets, 610, 6, and 580. That's what I like about girls because girls are disciplined. And that's how you see, because there's a plan behind, behind what she's doing, period. That, I love the fact that Selena, how she lays out so clear what are her stop? What are her lines? What is her risk? And what is her target? Because that's when you go into a trade, those are the two things that you need targets and stop loss. That's it. That's it. There's no, there's no other thing behind it. You cannot complicate it more. It's, a, it's as easy as it is. If everyone just follow that, put a risk, put your lines, put your target, and that's it. Austin, Tom. Uh, yeah, so the, the one thing I, this is the one thing that like, it, it kind of looks like starting late and starting slow, that kind of like webinar did a whole long time ago, like how to short consistently. It's like, you literally just have to um, wait for all of the, all of the crap to get out and wait for a line. And, and then, and so like she waited for 620 and then she was still willing to go all the way up to 650 and 70s, right? That's starting late 
and starting slow. And that's how, I mean, this is literally what I'm talking about when, when I mentioned that webinar, how to short consistently is you do stuff like this. But what, what I, what, where I think the real skill in the trade is, is the, is the, um, uh, uh, the, the moment where you say, you know what, I, I'm going to make a choice now. Now that I had my plan, I'm going to make a choice and say, I think this is a good opportunity to add. And now I'm going to move my risk down. Cause I guarantee after that ad, it's no longer going to 680. Um, the plan is not to go to 680. Now the plan is probably to stop at 630. And this is how, again, how you can get some bigger gains in your trading. You have to identify when it's okay to, you know, uh, mitigate your risk and, and add some size. So, um, there was a question, um, that they did it in the chat and not in the, in, in the zoom chat that is risk isn't too high 60 versus $1 reward. Austin, what do you have to say about that? What was the question? Risk isn't too high. Like she was risking too much. Uh, for, I mean, it looks like she was risking 630 at this point. That's what so, I'm yeah, that's yeah. What I'm to to me, risk is 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 uh, is irrelevant. It all depends on your risk. That's really personal. There are people that only risk ten cents. There are people that risk a dollar. That that all depends on where you're comfortable. And I'm pretty sure Austin has a lot, or Tom, or Harry, a lot of videos about risk. You know, it's it's what you feel it's right. It's there's not a there's no formula on it. You know. Yeah, I mean, if she was going to risk 680 in this in this instance, yeah, I would agree. Too much risk, but I don't think she would have. After the yeah. ad, don't risk the 680. I agree. Well, if yeah. you start with a small and then go higher, like for example, if her first line is 620 and he put 200 shares, and then her second line is 650 and it's 400 shares, and then their third line is 670 and he has 800 shares. That's a way to mitigate risk because then your average on those chairs, on those eight on four, yeah, on those seven hundred chairs, your risk is your average is six sixty something. So it's not the same as. The, anyway, I, I'll, I'll keep on going. No, 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 no. I think it. I think it's good. I. I think it. It all depends on the type of play, and yep. it all depends on what's really going on in the context. Like I think for this example, yeah, six thirty risk. It's, it's good. Yes, this time it did end up tanking, but just love the patience on this one. This is the real one that, you know, just love the patience. Um, next one, this is XELB chart for context right here. Um, um, yeah, so this is another one by that same kind of member who, um, you know, the one that we talked about, uh, talked about at the beginning that really didn't have that much of a plan. Um, but he ended up selling here <laughs> too early. Um, I like it. Um, I think that this is good. Like if you're if you're in at two sixty and your target's three bucks, then sell at three bucks, right? Mm -hmm. um, I think that pretty basic. I think the lesson here, you know, he's good at the reclaims. Like we showed the chart earlier, where um, you know he he had gotten emotional about his sell. And let's say we had him stuff three here and he's selling for break even. Well, the same thing would have just happened to him again, right? So, yeah. you know, that's this is fine. Been, yeah, like the lesson in this one is really just like, okay, view app reclaim. Um, you know, it didn't end up rejecting, it ended up kind of holding higher. Um, he took it, you know, and he, you know, he took it off. Um, you know, he says that he lost three or four trades before this, but super tight risk. He just wanted a win. I think every day you just want to win and you just want to end green and you just want to be consistent and robotic and non-emotional. Um, and I think in this situation, it's good. Like this is how you make money every single trade if you're presetting, right? Because when we get to that price, you're, you're going to get filled, right? So I, I, I love the preset, you know, and if you're a long trader, especially like it's very easy to uh, have a, a stock go from like, let's say uh, $8 all the way up to $10 in two minutes and then spend the entire time watching it go all the way back down, right? So uh, I, I'm, I'm, a, I'm a fan of the kind of the preset sells definitely for long traders um, because of how easy those gains can be robbed from you, right? 
Dude, you guys are never, longs are never going to be happy unless they get the fucking top. Like longs are never happy unless they get the top. Like if, if the stock ever goes higher, like, oh my God, I sold too soon. Oh my God, I sold too soon. Like you're always going to, just longs are always going to undersell the top. Just get like, get used to it. <laughs> like exactly. You're always going to undersell the top. So just pick a target, take it. And that's good. That's what I say as well. That I, I completely agree with that. Yep. Tommy. Yeah. Oh, sorry. Bro. No, no, you can go. No, no. I think that one of the most ever since I joined Mick, one of the most aha moment I had is when Aloha Austin said that traders are the most ungrateful human beings in the world. And I think it's that that that, that was like such a big slap in my face. It, like he punched me in the face, period. Like it was like, wow, he has just said uh, an absolute truth. And, and I don't believe in absolute truth. It's like it's stupid. It's just, it's just commenting on what, 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 what was just discussed, you know? Yeah. Yeah. All right. Tommy. Tommy, we good? Yeah, I'm good, bro. I, Great trade. Oh, yeah. So I just saved some time for a discussion. I mean, there's okay. like three minutes left. Okay. I, I wanted to say one thing. Um, so I wanted to make an announcement on Wednesday. 14 we're gonna have our first mic seminar for spanish-speaking people we're gonna we want to give some love to the spanish-speaking community inside mic so we're gonna be discussing swing trades that is a team that everybody wants so <laughs> Austin. <laughs> so we're gonna respect tuesday and thursday and is we're gonna see how we how 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 it develops if, if it's something that we have a lot of people in it. Maybe we'll keep on doing it every two weeks or every three weeks. It's it's a ongoing thing. It's, we're gonna test the waters, okay? So you're welcome to come. We're the the meeting is gonna be all in Spanish, okay? Así que si no hablas español, no vas a entender, okay? Ay papi, like Austin says. <laughs> <laughs> oh my. God. Uh, Wednesday, um, April four, April four, fourteen at seven p.m. <laughs> can we yeah everybody's welcome uh, we'll have um we'll have um the slides will have translation in english but the slides are gonna be pretty general you know it's like all the conversation will be spanish i hope gagash i hope i want Shakira de idea yeah, of course all right. Well, are you guys thinking maybe we just end it here or do you guys want to talk? About anyone it? have any questions? Yeah. Does anyone have any questions? Just spam the chat. <laughs> this guy. This guy. I do. Hey, if you already know that, then we No questions, no question about what we discussed. No one? That's great. That means we did an okay job. Yeah. Yep. Yeah. Okay. Yep. Yeah. All right. Well, I'll see you guys in a few weeks for the next one. See you in chat. Stay safe, everyone. And uh, yeah. See you guys. Au revoir. Bye bye. Bye. -bye. Oops.